everyone it's Sue and welcome to my channel today. Today I'm going to go through how I did this particular page. This is my design team project page for scrapbooking and crafts. The things that we were sent today was a set of uh, what I considered wings. So we got these. Now they could be leaves, they could be anything else but I took them as wings when I saw them. So what I decided to do was combine them with another uh, little um, one of these cutouts that I also ordered earlier on from Scrapbooking and Crafts, the, the little girl here. So what I've done is I've put her and I've used these as the wings. So please continue watching um, to watch how I achieve this page. The I did use a gel print background but of course you don't have to. You could use any other uh, background that you, you want to create but it's a fairly simple page to do you could also use I've used gel uh, prints for the insides of the girl and the wings but again you could use scrapbook paper too lots of different ways of doing this but um, and these wings here very versatile so continue watching have a look how I went with the project all right, my first step is that I'm going to glue my gel gel print backing onto my journal page. Now, of course, you can do a backing straight onto your page if you like. It's up to you. But I'm trying to use up a lot of my stash. So I felt when I came across this particular gel print that this would be really good to use as the backing for this particular project. It's uh, quite textured, this particular one. I'm not sure how I achieved it but it is actually very, very textured. So I'm going to just pop some glue onto my background. I might just pop some paper in there so that I can go right to the edge. You may want to use uh, a gel medium for this too because I have found that it's not always easy to use a glue stick with the craft paper background. And this itself is quite thick as well. So I'm just going to glue that down. And I will trim that, of course, once it's dry. Press that down. And while that is drying, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint my little uh, girl, which of course is from Scrapbooking and Crafts. So I'll just move this. I'm totally running out of space, of course and bits and pieces left from another project which actually I might use for this one now that I look at it all right so I'm going to just coat my girl in some black gesso I'm going to do the first coat in black gesso and this is just a Montmartre one then I'm actually going to do it in the black paint if you don't have either one you could just do a couple of coats of whichever you prefer um, now, I've got a fairly small brush, but I have a feeling I might need a smaller one. That's because it's not very thick, it's um, quite easy to paint. Okay, now just pop that to one side. And I'm going to dry it. So I'll be back in a moment just before I dry it. You can see actually it makes a really quite a nice image too. So if you, uh, you know, before you use this you could actually use it like almost like a stencil. Okay, so my gesso layer is dry and I am going to actually keep that because I think um, I can use that for something. So I'm going to keep that one. So I've got another piece of paper and now I'm going to use the black paint. And this one's just a Jo Sonia paint that I've had for quite some time. You could use any black paint you've got. Whoops. You don't need a lot of paint either. And because I do want to use this as a stencil, I am actually trying to get into all the spaces as well. And I need a little bit more paint. I 
Okay, I think that's well and truly covered. And might as well just use up the rest of this paint where I can. Okay, I will dry this with the heat gun and clean up this little bit and I'll be back in a moment. Alright, she is dry. Just be aware that because it is um, like a cardboard uh, piece that the more moisture you put on obviously the more the cardboard starts to break down so just be very careful when you're pulling her up you shouldn't have too much of a problem if you're careful so that's her done so I'm just going to leave her to one side to, to totally dry now I'm going to do my wing pieces which are these other pieces from scrapbooking and craft and they are joined together so I'm going to just carefully trim them apart get rid of that little joining bit okay all right now I'm going to choose which way I'm going to use them uh, that way I think and that way let's see maybe I think I might have the Ooh, let's just have a look probably the longer part of it there if you can have a look there's the the shorter and the longer I'm going to use the longer for towards the body I think because that gives me a little bit more room for when I put the wings like so um, and I think I might pop that one upside down so that um, yeah that works okay so I'm going to coat these in uh, probably gold straight away I might just do two coats of gold see how we go with that hmm, gold's a little bit chunky so we'll see how we go might need to water it down a little bit been a while since I've used this one. It's the Joe Sonia uh, Rich Gold Series 2. But of course, you can use any gold paint you've got. I do actually have another one here, which was a recent purchase from uh, Big W, actually. I think it was only about $2 if you're here in Australia. Um, and it's not too bad, actually. I may actually put a little bit on these wings as well. But I thought I would use up some of this Joe Sonia one first because I have had it for a while as I've said and it is quite chunky. So I really thought I'd need to use it up. I'd rather use it up than throw it out. <laughs> um, as I'm sure you will agree. And I do have quite a few tubes of paint now that I really do need to use them up. That's what I do like about the gel prints, making gel prints. You can use a lot of those uh, paints that you've had sitting there for a little while. Alright, I might just keep going with this and I will come back when I have finished covering them all. Okay, now I have given them one coat and I'm just looking at them and I'm thinking maybe I will actually give them a slightly full second coat of the other gold just because I think it might, oops, it might give them a little bit more contrast. So I'm just going to wipe that off my fingers since it just splattered everywhere and just dab in a few places. And I'll just lift it up in a minute and show you the difference in the golds because I'm sure you're aware that different golds just come up differently. And I just think it might just give it a little bit of extra. So just where I think it needs a little bit more. Where it might have just been a bit of a thin coat. As the other one was a little chunky, there were a few areas that... Um, didn't quite go as well as I would have liked. And again, you don't have to use gold for your wings. You could use whatever colour you'd like. I just think that gold um, sort of is that magical and sparkly. Sort of gives it a magical feel. Alright, I might just leave it at that. 
and now give them another dry and then we'll set them to one side I think I'll just dry them and then I'll show you what they look like okay so this is what they look like when they've got the two shades of gold I think you can just see the little bits of different gold in on the top there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually back these with another piece of gel print now I have this one which I thought would be great for the girl um, and I'm thinking for the back of these ones I'm actually going to use this now this is a gel print done on um, tracing paper or something but I'm thinking they should depending on where I pop it it sh they should stand out behind the wing so that's what I'm hoping anyway so we'll see how we go with that all right now I'm going to trim the page from the journal all right so that should be better so hopefully you can see Now remember as I said you can do the background um, any way you want. You could start with the gel print and add a little bit to it as well which I might actually do. I might do some stamping on it as well. Particularly as I've got the black um, for the for the girl um, I'll move it this way. I might actually um, do a little bit of black stamping just so that I've got the two colours or the black tones in. Oh my goodness, this is not easy. Okay, all right. Let's just have a look how that looks. Yep, okay. All right, I'm quite happy with how that's worked. Now, I've just got stuff everywhere, so just let me move a few things. All right, what I might do is I've got some stays on ink somewhere. Alright, let's just put my stays on ink and a script stamp, which is back to front on the thing. Okay. So what I'm thinking is just a little bit, not much, just enough to put a little bit of black in the background. Now because this uh, background here is quite textured, it's actually quite difficult to get the stamp to show up but that's okay we'll, we'll be right okay it's really just to put a hint of color or black in the background and I might edge the page with black as well I think that might be nice okay I think that will do. I don't think I need too much of that. All right. Yeah, let's put that away. Because I'm running out of space. Okay, so. Next step, I'm going to just sit that to one side again. Uh, if I can find some space. And I'm actually going to put the girl onto this and cut her out. So I'm going to use art glitter glue, um, mostly because I have the fine tip on it, and I'm going to need the fine tip to um, cover the back. Although I could actually use a uh, glue stick and run run it on some paper, but I might see how this goes. I'm quite um, excited to see how this works out actually. This uh, particular um, little cutout that I've got, this one I ordered myself, this was not part of the design team package, uh, 
but when I saw it I thought oh wow I really want to see I really want that um, I'm thinking we might go for the more ooh, maybe up here okay now there is a little bit of glue on the background but I'm thinking that's going to dry clear anyway so it should be okay just want to make sure I've got a lot of glue to hold it down so that's what that looks like you can see the color just coming through from the background okay now I'm going to do exactly the same with the four pieces of wing okay now but to make sure that okay that's how they're going to go so um, I think I'll have the two bottom ones more blue if I can and again fine tip uh, glue applicator really good for this sort of thing of course when I saw these my my first thing was I thought they were wings or part, I thought oh I can make wings of those um, but of course they could also be uh, leaves from um, for a plant as well but it's up to you it's your imagination what you can turn them into if you had a lot of them I imagine you could actually make them a circular type of design too that would look quite effective okay so I need another blue one now the next one is going to be less blue so I might work more up here I think although it doesn't stand out as much because of the yellow so maybe maybe over here I might try and get that bit of red in there and maybe a bit of red there I think that would be nice Alright, I might let those dry and what I might do is just to make sure they sort of hold well I'm going to put something on top of them to just weight them down a little bit um, particularly at the ends there Alright, so that can hold that Now while that's happening I'm going to cut this out uh, Where's the small pair of scissors? Now if you're good with a... Uh, blade you could probably do it with a blade but I don't think I'm quite that good all right there she is now because it's very difficult to get right to the edges I'm actually going to get one of my black markers permanent markers and I'm just going to run around the edge just to get rid of any of that um, the the orange or whatever that you can see just to make sure that she blends in better and I find the chisel edge of a marker easier to do that with It's a, oh, it's surprising how quickly you can fix up things with a um, with a permanent marker. And unfortunately, I just got in there a little bit, but it's not too bad. Okay, so that's a little bit better. You can see that she's darker around the edge now. Okay, so that's her. Now the um, wings, which should be a lot easier to cut. I'm actually going to use my bigger scissors because I find them actually better to cut with than the smaller scissors. I do have another set of these um, wings, leaves, 
whatever they are, <laughs> whatever you decide they are. And um, I might actually make another paper doll. I really do like making the paper dolls. And I think they'd be great for wings on a paper doll. Actually, you could use them also. I was just, as I dropped it, I noticed you could make them um, petals of a flower. So, really, quite a few uses for these particular ones, I must say. I do like these ones. Now, I'm actually going to edge these in black as well because. Um, I think that will help stand them out from the page better as well. So I am going to get my black texture again and do the same thing with these ones, just on the outside. All right, so we'll just edge these. Mm as well. Okay, so you can see it just it just edges it a little bit. Whoops. So we'll just do the other two. Fairly quick page really I think. Not too fiddly covering and painting these. Alright. So, let's have a look. Where's my book? Just make sure it's up the right way. Yep, I think. <laughs> yep, I've done that before. <laughs> Alright, so let's have a look. Just get the whole thing in view. There we go. Alright, so I'm thinking she can sit there. And the wings are going to go behind her. Like so, somehow. And then I'm going to pop a sentiment there. And I think I might do a border. And I'm going to call that done. So... Possibly gel medium might actually be better to glue these. So let me just grab. Okay, what have I got? I've got the Distress Collage Medium. We'll see how we go with that. Uh, have I got a brush handy? Alright. Uh, now I'm just thinking how am I going to do this? Probably better to put the leaves first. So we'll start with one of them. it was there. So that's the first one. Now the second one, yep, matches there, okay. So, like so. Yep. And this one, I think, uh, let's have a look, I think maybe, I think I like that, so yep, so pointing the point together with the other points, I think I might need a bit more of the gel medium actually, just because my background is quite textured. there, oops, alright, okay I have printed some, um, a sentiment or a quote that I'm going to use um, and it's if you don't have wings create them because I kind of, that struck a chord with me because 
I've always wanted to have wings. I think it would be just one of those brilliant things to have. Okay, so I'm not sure how I'm going to set these out yet. Alright, now let's have a look. I did think of putting them down here. Or across the bottom, but I think I like them there best. So I'm going to glue those down and again I'm going to use the matte medium. And I'm just putting them straight down the page. I'm not using any um, of the, the tape because um, my, as I said I think before, my journal's getting too thick and it really does get very difficult to close if you keep using all the dimensional stuff. Mm, I think they could probably come a little bit lower. Almost done and then what I'm thinking is I think I need to have a bit of a border on the page to me it just needs something so I don't know whether I want a thick border thin border or what okay have enough glue on it. Okay. Alright. Unfortunately I've noticed this particular cardstock I'm using, the um, ink from the inkjet, if it's not really dry, it does have a habit of uh, running when you put any liquid near it. More so than the normal, I think. But anyway, okay, now let's see. I think I might just edge around the wings with my Stabilo All because I think it just needs a little bit more to stand out. And I'm just going to give my pencil a quick sharpen so that I've got a bit more of a point. I like to have a point when I do this. On the pencil, I mean. So I'm just doing a very fine line next to, just basically outlining it. And then I will get one of those water brushes and just wet it very carefully so that it uh, doesn't stand out too much. All right, uh, let's have a look. Where have I got one? Okay. I don't want it to stand out too much, but just a little bit. Yeah, you can see the difference between this one and this one. Yeah, I think I like that. Just a little bit, not too much.
Okay. All right. Now, I could do it for the edge of all these, but I don't think I will. Now, what I am going to do is, before I put my arm in that, now, I do need an edge. I'm just going to outline the page like I did the letters, or the words, I should say, and see how that goes. Just a little bit thicker, though. Um, Oh, that was not what I was hoping to do. Uh, where's the little? Never mind. Okay. So let's just have a look, shall we? Okay. Quite happy with that. I think we'll call that done. Yeah, thank you very much for joining me. And as I said, um, have a look um, on Scrapbooking and Crafts website and you should be able to find both of the uh, little cutouts that I've used today. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.